Southern Africa's worst drought in 35 years. Interrupted only by an equally disastrous 100-year flood here in Malawi two harvests ago. Has prompted the UN's World Food Program to declare its highest emergency alert in Malawi and neighboring Mozambique and Zimbabwe plus Madagascar. It's always a difficult period for the family because uh, if there is no food, then the family cannot survive. For Malawi farmer Obli Ser, this drought means having to ration the same fodder of corn husks he feeds his animals to now feed his family. Over 40 million people in the region are without reliable access to food. And it's expected to get worse as the region moves further into the lean season between harvests. Close to half of the population is really facing extreme uh, difficulty in the form of malnutrition and hunger. Right now, in terms of the drought, the things that we're doing in Malawi are literally bringing immediate provision of food. Most of these women say this is the only food they'll have for the rest of the month, having long since run out of their own supplies of food. And they've got another six months to go before they can have another harvest if the rains come. This means that people still need support because we are basically depending on land trade agriculture. So if rains don't come, then they'll need support. 18-year-old Ruth Raphael and her family of three are totally dependent on these emergency distributions of corn and sorghum after two successive harvest shortfalls. Two, three. Others are relying on the monthly cash distributions from CARE and other international organizations while they last to buy food locally, which is doubled in price due to the drought. But with no end in sight to this drought and the growing food scarcities believed by many scientists to be a result of climate change and never enough international funding for emergency relief, CARE is focusing on longer term solutions by empowering women with the knowledge and tools to play a larger role in food production and family finances. and that means helping them diversify their crops and uh, plant things that will have greater yield in terms of productivity. We're also uh, enabling them to have seeds so that they can plant in the next harvest, which have been depleted. We're helping them with things like fertilizer and different farming techniques that enables them to, even when the rains don't come, to have drought-resistant crops. Helping them plant gardens so that they can support their families with nutritious foods. Hey. CARE has a program that we call Village Savings and Loan, which brings women together and men uh, to save a little bit of money each week and then to loan it out to one another to start small businesses. In fact, more Malawian women are relying on these Village Savings and Loans associations for emergency funds than from international monetary assistance. Noria Kamwendo, a widow with two children, is borrowing back money she put into her village savings and loan in better times to buy potatoes and mangoes in neighboring Mozambique she can sell for a profit in Malawi to support her family. I think what is important to remember when you come into these situations is the level of strength and resiliency and character that you see um, and enormous hard work that people are putting in to feed their families. As a parent, the fear is there. How am I going to feed my children? with the current situation, the way how things are going. So we need to go back to farming. With the next harvest and chance to replenish their food supplies not until well into 2017, <laughs> all that these Malawi farmers can do is prepare their fields in hopes of a normal rainfall. This is Mike Saray for CARE, reporting from Southern Malawi.